Hey everyone, Nabil here and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk the King of Fighters 15. My guest today is a very known FGC community member from Europe, in the UK specifically. Uh, he's done a lot of goods for the FGC in general, SNK Gaming, and he's been quite busy with a lot of online tournaments lately with Samurai Showdown, King of Fighters 14, and even Tekken 7. I'm talking, of course, about Vern, and you might know him as Lord Grimulus. Lord Grimulus, thank you so much for accepting this invitation. Thank you very much for having me. I'm quite honored. Um, I, I, I want to, you know, apologize for all the, the, you know, the trouble trying to schedule this. I know, uh, you know, we scheduled a couple times and I had to change it. I had some issues and then I messed up with that, with the time zone. So apologies for that. I just want to make that clear that it's, it was my fault for not getting this episode as, as, uh, you know, as ready as, uh, you know, as, as early as possible. It does happen. Like I said, uh, just before the interview, real life does have a tendency to kick you when you least expect it. I know. So I know. Um, these things happen. You know, I think you've got kids as well, haven't you? Yeah, I do have two daughters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> or not. But <laughs> <laughs> what about I'm you? Myself, yeah, I've got a, a son and a daughter. Uh, both okay. of them have ASD. That's, they're both on the autistic spectrum. So oh, okay. I do know and understand how difficult it is sometimes to um, schedule your life around what needs what you actually want to do yep yeah so i was like the dog sorry <laughs> that's, that's fine um so lord grimles uh, you know a question that just actually popped in, in, into my mind where did you get the username from like Lord grimles what does it come from oh okay so this is a long-standing thing um and my wife is to blame so <laughs> <laughs> she is a big fan of i don't know if you remember a cartoon or if you got in morocco a cartoon called uh is it billy, the, and, mandy. billy and mandy the grim adventures of billy and mandy uh, no, I don't remember that. Maybe, but okay. I don't remember it. Yeah, It's an old cartoon, a fairly old cartoon from, I think, the mid-2000s. And um, one of the characters in this cartoon is Death. And one of the main characters, um, Mandy, manages to enslave Death, who goes by the name of Grimm. And he's this whiny old Jamaican character who constantly whines and moans and bitches about how difficult life is and stuff like that, ironically <laughs> enough. Um, and that kind of stuck because she said that reminded me of her. Uh, sorry, he reminded her of me. So <laughs> thank you. Honey. Yeah, it was somewhere. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's where it came from. And it kind of over time morphed into Grimulus. And then the Lord came from the fact that I tried to enter it into PSN one day so many years ago. And I was like, wait, there's one other person in the whole world who has my name. No, I am Lord Grimulus. So <laughs> <laughs> that's where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So now that's clear. You know, it just came out to, to my mind. It's like, where do you get the, the username from? But Lord Grimulus, again, thank you so much for being here. So let's talk a little bit about your history with, with SNK games like what what's your first memory of playing an snk game oh wow okay so we can go right the way back to the 80s all right um yeah <laughs> we can go right the way back to the 80s now i'm fortunate because i live in london i'm probably very very lucky to have been brought up in this capital city because we've had so much uh, in terms of foreign influence, so many uh, different cultures come here and, and, and meld together. And it's, it's been brilliant for me because I get to sample absolutely everything. And part of that is um, obviously arcade machines. Our arcades in the, in the 80s and the 90s are absolutely popping. We have them absolutely everywhere. Um, obviously, you could travel out to the seasides and, 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 and uh, find an arcade which had games, but the competition was never actually great. Uh, you had to travel into London or, or know your own scene uh, in your local arcades in order to get that kind of competition that you wanted. So anyway, I digress. Um, in the early 80s, uh, I remember going to South End with my mum and my cousin. And uh, she used to give us five pounds each. And for each pound, you get uh, 10, 10 pences which would set you up for a very, very long time in an arcade. Do you know what I mean? I think for, for Americans, they get four quarters to a, a dollar, yeah. which is not as good value. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so, so a game would cost like a, like a 10, 10, 10p? 10p, that's right. It would huh. cost 10p oh, wow. to, to play an arcade game. And you, if you had a pound, that's 10 goes. Yeah. You're laughing. You're absolutely laughing. And, you know, being a little kid with your big fat afro and running around everywhere is absolutely fun. Um, so I remember coming across a game called Ikari Warriors. Mm -hmm. 
And I remember think, playing this game and thinking, this is amazing. Me and my cousin, you know, play one, player two. And uh, that was my first uh, look at an SNK game. Uh, I didn't have that on the home console because I, we had a game called Commander, which was made by Ocean, I think. I can't remember who that was made by, but it was very, very similar to Ikari War is the, the vertical scrolling, mm -hmm. shoot them up, omnidirectional sort of shooty game. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Ikari War is my, was my very first SNK game. Okay, wow. Well, okay, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't a fighting game. Well, at the time, was it? Uh, and then Street Fighter One was was released, but it wasn't. Was it? Was it popular in in, in London? The first Street Fighter. Street Fighter One came along quite a bit after that. Uh, that was eighty seven. Ikari War One. It wasn't quite a bit. Ikari Warriors was, I think, eighty six. Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Street Fighter came along in eighty seven, eighty nine ish, and it was very, very popular. The first, really, the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, because we we even had the arcade cabinets, which had the punch pads. Oh yeah, really? I'm ne I've never seen those. Like I've seen them yeah. in pictures. I've never had those. Yeah, if if you yeah. went to a large enough arcade, then they would have uh, punch pads, which you had to. The the theory was the harder you punched it, the harder the move that uh -huh. came out. But as you know, on that game, it didn't matter what you did. It didn't yeah. matter the hell it wanted to do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, that that was um, very very popular, um, because it was the first time anybody had seen anything like it. Yep. Now, for after that, I think we had Street Fighter Two, which and I think I think that's yeah, exactly that's what that's what brought the majority of the current FGC to fighting exactly. games. You know, like you know, your generation, my generation is this. Clearly, yeah. Street Fighter Two was was the game that brought us yeah. into into fighting games. But we also had um, Fatal Fury, mm -hmm. which was out about the same sort of time, about ninety one, I think it was. Correct. It's one ninety two ish, mm -hmm. um, and. I remember looking at Fatal Fury and thinking, but these characters have got like personality. Do you know what I mean? They're not like cookie cutter, co cookie cutouts. Yeah. You know, they're not stereotypes. You know, the wandering Japanese bloke, you've got the the, the beastly blood, beastly guy in Blanca, you've got the um also the, the palette swap for Ken. You didn't have that in Fatal Fury. Your, your two main characters, plus Joe, was Andy and Terry. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. But that wasn't my favorite SNK. Beat them up. For okay. that, we've got to go. For, for that, we've got to go for Art of Fighting. Really? All right. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. The I think that was the first game that introduced the cliffhanger. Correct. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah, for me, that was absolutely amazing because you play a game, you clock it with Rio, and you'd be like, oh, "There's more." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, it introduced one of my favorite characters, uh, King. I main king have done for all of the KOF history now, um, along with uh, Ralph and, and Clark, and pretty much any member of Vicari for reasons that I mentioned earlier, um, because of her story in Art of Fighting. When you first introduced to her, you you think that she's a guy, <laughs> yeah, and it's not until you've managed to beat her uh, that you think, oh wait a minute, it's a woman. <laughs> But then you read, you read her story, you get told her story and you realize that her struggle was actually quite noble. And the reasons for doing that was, was, was very, very good. Obviously she's trying to raise money for, for her, her, mm -hmm. her younger brother um, for an operation. But no, she's definitely one of the, the, the most thought out characters in the franchise, I think. And so I use her because I appreciate her. She's brilliant. So, so, so Arrow Fighting was your favorite game at the time. Oh. And, and you, you say something important because you know, if you're talking gameplay, comparing those two games to Street Fighter, I mean, you know, I'm a biggest NK fan, but from a gameplay perspective, I mean, Street Fighter 2 was the better game in terms of gameplay only. Uh, I see unpopular opinion here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah, I, I didn't. Street Fighter 2 was a very accomplished game. It was tight. It was, well, tighter. Um, it was uh accurate you know you, you couldn't mm -hmm. really you, you didn't really have much leeway in, in in terms of input um snk was tighter uh it needed more accuracy and it offered you so much more than street fires you had the 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 zooming screen mm -hmm. you had um the graphics and i'm talking about artificing here specifically um you had the graphics which showed you bruises as they happened you had yeah. other factors like the spirit gauge bar, you had uh, taunting, you had all of these different things, which I think added so much more than Street Fighter. It made it a much more interesting game than let me see how many times I can hit you and defeat you. It, it introduced mind games, it introduced tactics, it introduced so much more than Street Fighter ever did give you. That's my opinion. 
Well, that's, I mean, I agree with you. In fact, that you said, you know, those games had more personality and that's for sure. I mean, it was an interesting story. There was a cliffhanger with auto fighting, but Fedor for you had that, re, you know, like revenge and, yeah. and, you know, it just was nothing, something we haven't seen before. I mean, even, even like, you know, your, your normal, like beat em ups at the time, they didn't have that much story. And then you, you bring this new genre of fighting games mm-hmm. known only for, you know, beating the crap out of each other. And adding that layer of of story and and care is what I think made the SNK game so special for 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 many of us. So you, I agree with you on that. Now now on the gameplay thing, I'm I'm actually I am surprised that you, that you think gameplay wise. I'm not talking about the the personality, the look, the graphics. That it's you know Street Fighter was inferior to them. That's that's a very interesting interesting opinion. I give you that. Okay, I'll, I'll try and explain that in in in, in more depth. So. This will go down to, I think, the type of player that I am. So I used to be a tournament player. I kind of still am, although I don't enter my own tournaments anymore. And because obviously the UK is the UK, I am now pretty much the only person holding SNK tournaments because the UK is the UK. So I can't enter my own tournaments because it's just silly. (laughs) So, oh, what was the point I was trying to raise? I went off on a tangent then. What were we just talking about? Gameplay of Street Fighter compared to... Uh, being quite if in, being a little bit inferior to SNK games at the time. For yes. Hour. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the sort of player that I am, I won't use top tiers as a rule because I want to know how the game plays. I want to understand the mechanics. I want to understand how people play. I like to sit back and watch. I like to understand what's going on, and I like to take advantage of the different things which can guarantee you victory, mm-hmm. not just the obvious. Yeah. So as I mentioned with SNK games, uh, specifically Art of Fighting, you had all of these different elements, which you didn't have in Street Fighter. Street Fighter 2, uh, Vanilla, you didn't have a super gauge. Um, <clears throat> that didn't come until Super. Uh, and then you had, uh, but and then you could do a special move, uh, sorry, a super special move, but you already had that in SNK games. Mm-hmm. That was already a thing. The desperation mm-hmm. was already alive and, and, and kicking. Um, as I mentioned, you already had your spirit gauge. You already had your taunting. You already had your spacing. You already had, you know, the in and out jumps in in, in Fatal Fury. Um, I think those gameplay, gameplay mechanics were a lot better than Street Fighter. Yeah. As I said, unpopular yeah. opinion. I'm full of it. Yeah, but I, I understand. Um, uh, I mean, it, it is it is it is a valid point what you're saying. I mean, it's not. Uh, I agree with the spirit gauge, the you know the power gauge, the the two lanes was was also you know unheard mm-hmm. of. So um, now, so that's and did you guys have a lot of uh, SNK game? I mean, a lot of Neo G arcade cabinets in 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 London. Um, as I said, we were quite lucky because mm-hmm. we didn't have to travel far to find any kind of fighting game. Um, at, when I was growing up in London, you had your local communities, uh, which could be centered around a sweet shop, a corner shop, or even a kebab shop. You'd, ha- you'd always have a street fighter cabinet and you'd always, almost always have an SNK cabinet. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't SNK, it was Mortal Kombat. Um, and if you didn't have an SNK cabinet, you only had to walk 10 minutes down the road to find one. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that's East London specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm originally from North London, even though I do live in East London now. Um, and we had, uh, a, it was a, a Greek restaurant called George's. And I discovered this when I was about 10, this place when I was about 10. And the Greek restaurant never had anybody in it ever. I don't ever remember seeing anybody in there, but they had a huge arcade room at the back. And you had Street Fighter, which always had a crowd around it. You had Faithful Fury, you had um, a couple of Art of Fighting con- uh, cabinets. And those had, the Art of Fighting cabinets had not as, never had as many people around it as Street Fighter did. Mm-hmm. But the people that were playing it were very, very good. Oh, well, really? Anyway, we didn't really have like special move lists or anything like that on the cabinets yes. oh, yeah. or anything. We just had to figure it out as we went along. Um, but yeah, definitely. We had, them, we had them pretty much everywhere. Oh, really? okay. That's because, uh, for example, in uh, when I grew up in Morocco, we had we had arc- we didn't have a lot of arcades. I mean, where I was living, you know, we had one. And honestly, I was only playing arcades during the summer because you know we used to go in a place in the summer with a lot of arcade games. But yeah, SNK games were you know you always have uh, an SNK cabinet, so that that's the case. Now in the US, from from what I've you know I've talked to people, SNK games were not except maybe for Samurai Showdown, uh, a little bit of Fatal Fury. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot of uh, an SNK cabinets or Neo Geo cabinets in there. 
Um, so, so that covers about the, you know, your first exposure, if you will, to the SNK games. What about the, uh, the King of Fighters uh, games? Okay. So KOF started for me with 94. And that was, I found that in an arcade around the corner from where I am currently living back in 94. <laughs> and um, a friend of mine at the time was playing it. And I was like, what is this? This looks really interesting. Wait, hang on. There's an army team in it. Obviously I've, I'm obsessed with anything army, by the way. Um, so I, I, I looked at this team and I was like, Clark and Ralph, Clark and Ralph, Clark and Ralph. And I went away. And I spoke to a few people. And the rumor was that's Team Ikari. And the story indeed say Team Ikari. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so um went back for that. And yeah, my first KOF was actually 94. Um, enjoyed it, loved it, and never looked back since. Yeah. <laughs> so you've you've I'm guessing you didn't miss any any release of the King of Fighters since then. I have. Missed really? a few releases, yes, because I think after my first major tournament was in was for King of Fighters '97, and that okay. was at Namco Wonder Park, which was pretty much the mecca for arcade uh, games in London. That was when it was at Great Wimmore Street. Now it's on the South Bank. It's not even a patch on what it used to be. Uh -huh. um, so that was my first official major tournament. I did pretty well, you know. It was all right. Single limb. I managed to beat this guy called Daisuke, Japanese player. Um, and then got knocked out the next round, but it's fine. <laughs> it, was, it was single um, elimination. You lose, you're gone. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I went back for 98 uh, and they had this really weird system where it was like uh, everybody had to play everybody at the start. It wasn't even around Robin. It was just cram onto every machines and the people with the, mass, with the most amount of wins got to play in the actual tournament. Weird. Um, and yeah, yeah, and you had like people like Ryan Hart gate gatekeeping, which made it really, really difficult. Um, I didn't do very well in that. Um, and then after that, I kind of went away and pretended to be an adult uh, for a few years and missed a few of the KOFs. Didn't mean that I didn't play them on like home console because I had like an AES, I had a, an arcade cabinet at home. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. But I, I didn't actually manage to play them in as part of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so I never really enjoyed them to their fullest. I didn't come back until 11, 12. Um, when they released, no, it was 12. I came back uh, when they released that on, on home console and mm -hmm. the net code was absolutely shocking. I loved the game, mm -hmm. but the net code made it impossible to play. Um, and I, honestly, I don't even remember how bad was the net code for 12. I, uh, it I had it on ridiculous. Xbox 360. Yeah, I, I think I tried it maybe once. I didn't even bother, honestly. I think it was that bad. Yeah, I think that was a Codemasters release. And I could yeah. be wrong. Was it? It was Codemasters. No, I, I could be wrong. I think it's wrong. Um, I can't remember who released that game. But anyway, it was, it was absolutely shockingly bad. And I do remember the community trying to get forward and say, look, you know, we need this to work, but it works fine inside Japan is what they're saying. Yes, but we're not in Japan. We're on the other side of the planet. So... Yeah, it, it just didn't work. Um, so I knocked it on the head. Um, 13, I actually did not like. Really? Unpopular opinion. I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. Wow, that's nice. And you like 12, right? I liked 12. I, did, I didn't like 13. Really? Um, what, 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 yeah. what was that? For me, uh, the main thing, reason I didn't like 13 was the fact that a single combo would leave you with a pixel of health. Mm -hmm. And... That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I don't think that has a place in any game outside of Killer Instinct. So <laughs> <laughs> you want that sort of combo length of a string, combo strength, combo string length, go play King of Ring Instincts. Yeah. You know, that, that game's there for you, but don't bring it to KOF, not at all. And you know, that's a, that's, a, that's, that's an interesting point because uh, for me, you know, I, you know, I, I didn't, I played 94 in the arcades like crazy. I loved that game. 95, I, I played it mostly on Game Boy, you know, so I didn't, I didn't get access to, to the arcade as much as I wanted to. Uh, 96, a little bit, 97, I played a lot of 97, loved it. 98 as well. And I kind of skipped 99, 2000 for, not I didn't skip them, but it was it was part of, of my life where I had, you know, you have to go to college and, you know, get busy, as you said, pretending to be an adult. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I only pl- played those at home, you know, like with emulators or with the Dreamcast or what have you. Uh, and then when I tried to come back to start playing with people, it was with 13. And, and I was intimidated because of these, of this thing, you know, coming from 98, I didn't, I didn't play much of 2002. So, you know, you know how, how 98, 97 and those games are, I mean, the combos are simple, nothing, you know, crazy. Yeah. So I went to 13 and I saw that same combos that you're talking about. And I was, you know, they really, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't keep up. It was just too much that it, it, it made me not, not play the game when it, when it came out and uh, not played, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, competitively, I played for story, of course, but, uh, so I, I kind of get your point there. But of course, what also made it bad was the DLC characters like Claw, Yuri. Um, mm-hmm. No, not Claw. Um, was he DLC? He wasn't DLC, was he? Takuma? I um, mean, Mr. Yeah, Karate? Ta- yeah. yeah, him. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, he broke the game. <laughs> I was like, I'm not playing this. Why, why am I putting myself through this kind of stressful? You know, I, I, I didn't enjoy that game. It was great to look at at a high level. Oh, which yeah. most KOFs usually are great to look at at a high level, which is why I think a lot of people tend to gravitate towards top tier characters because they think I'm playing at a high level. You're not. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> um, but other than that, I, I don't, I don't think that game holds much for me at all. Now, 14, mm-hmm. unpopular opinion. Uh, I actually quite enjoyed because for me, that was my return to the KOF series uh, in full. It came at a really, really good time because we just started Elf officially, officially East London mm-hmm. Prices, um, in 2016. And uh, we actually held the very first European King of Fighters 14 tournament. Oh, wow. Cool. Didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. We were working with Deep Silver directly and um, they managed to get to us, um, get, get the games to us which was cool, uh, codes in particular, and, and some hard copies, which I was able to get out as prizes. And we worked with uh, Special Effects, a charity. We like working with charities um, to raise uh, quite a bit of money, actually, for them. Oh, cool. Yeah, so uh, after the first tournament, it kind of uh, connected a lot of communities which were fragmented in London. Because like I said before, London's a very big, it's very densely populated, um, but you'll get pockets all over the capital because mm-hmm. it's a big city. Um, and those pockets may never reach the other pockets and help the community to grow. Mm-hmm. It's not because of an ignorance thing. It's just because of location, geographical location, yep. um, your, the people you know, the people you feel comfortable with. It's only when you have like a major event that people talk about stuff nowadays mm-hmm. um, and they'll sort of come out of their comfort zone and go visit. But um, back then it was it was very different. Um, so King of Fighters 14, uh, managed to bring together quite a lot of people. It's kind of reunited myself and Super, who knew of each other back in the arcade days, but mm-hmm. didn't really have too much to, be, to do with each other because I was always the guy that um, was was really, really quiet and kind of stood behind the person who was making all the noise. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and Super was the guy who's making all the noise. <laughs> so we knew of each other, didn't really have much to do with each other, but 14 brought us together and we're actually really good friends because of it. Um, and we we started doing uh, the online tournaments for Europe. Mm -hmm. Uh, Back then it was TNT. TNT was uh, only a KOF tournament uh, about four years ago. We did that for about two years. And um, then we changed it up a little bit. So we started doing Tekken, Soul Calibur, um, and all these other type of games. And I don't know, our schedule's all over the place now. So we do quite a lot. The team's grown a lot. Yeah. And yeah, we do a lot. We do a lot of stuff online. So and it's all uh, thanks to fourteen. So you you're happy you were happy with 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 all, with fourteen's online netcode. I was absolutely. I mean, I was able to play. I'm, I am still able to play people in in America, like they're sitting in my front room. Oh, okay, um, that's pretty cool. Because um, <laughs> a lot of people complain about fourteen in terms of of online netcode, and I think it's not. You know, because a lot of people are comparing it to the recent rollback netcode releases that we've had from code mystics when you can't compare it to that but um i've had no problem playing people in europe uh playing people in the uk from morocco just works really really well have a problem playing people in the us that's for sure uh Mm -hmm. but it's not you know it's not a bad you know uh netcode see now i have a thought on this now everybody is quick to blame the netcode but Everybody has different internet connections. Not everybody's on, on, on fiber. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Some people still use an old copper wire and then have has like one meg upload. Yep. And it doesn't matter how fast your internet is. If a person's internet is so, is significantly slower than yours, then it will never reach its potential ever. And you a know, lot of so, people are, are still using Wi-Fi for online games. Exactly, exactly. There's there's so many different factors which would determine how good a game's connectivity will be online. Um, it's never always just the publisher's fault. And personally, I've had not many complaints with, with KOF, although there have been a few times where um, it's been difficult to connect to somebody who's like three roads away from me. Um, but in the same lobby, I can play against someone who's three or four continents away from me. <laughs> And be fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, same with same with similar with Sam, Samurai Showdown. I can play people in Japan and, and the States. Um, strangely, though, not China, uh, with fairly decent connections. Mm-hmm. But I can't but, always but again, connect. The to thing me. with Samurai Showdown, it's a it's a slow paced game. So you know, even when you have a bit of flag, it doesn't really matter that much compared to King of Fighters. Sam Show is not always slow. If, if you're, pl- <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's not always a slow game. <laughs> no, it's not. But it's it's you know it's it's methodical. You know, take your time. You know, kind of like just go and do combos one after the other, and where you you notice that you're there's a bit of a lag. No, I yeah. Think. I mean, the game's heavy anyway. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's not got an immediate reaction when you jump. It doesn't have an immediate reaction mm-hmm. when you press a button anyway. So, I think the lag is somewhat hidden. Yeah. Uh, in 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 the actual workings of the game itself, uh, but no, Samurai. I will disagree with you. Samurai Showdown isn't isn't necessarily a slow game. Mm-hmm. You know, we we do Samurai Showdown tournaments, and we do have oh, yeah. some of the best players in 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 Europe and in North Africa. Uh, oh, yeah. the, the, those tournaments are hype, man. I mean, I've I haven't <laughs> been able to enter one for for a couple months now, but I, I mean, I always get my ass kicked. But I still, it's really enjoyable. It really works works really well, and it it's really hype tournaments um, and honestly I've, I've done a couple online tournaments but what you guys are doing is just fantastic like the way it's it's you know organized presented uh, it's just really really tight man and you guys are doing a really fantastic job thank you very much like i said it's not only me we do have a very very good a very good very accomplished team uh, we do like to try and push the boundaries of production um and we've got people writing writing software in order to do this uh, in through pun life in particular um and we've got this, some very good designers we've got some very good tos we're doing well i like to think we're doing well no yeah oh, definitely you guys are doing really really great and um now what about what about the um, the king of the 98 um 2002 um did you ever get into those games i did i did i like them very much um although my favorite is actually 97 unpopular opinion <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mind 98, uh, 98, 98 UM. I didn't mind it at all. Um, but I don't know. I f- prefer, I always gravitate back towards 97. I prefer that one. Maybe because it's it's kind of the first game that really makes you feel as though you're playing KOF on a big grand stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's, that was the way the story took you. Yeah. yeah. And some of the stages like Monaco, for example, my favorite stage of all time, you know, where it's got that uh, radio playing in the background. Down, 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 down. <laughs> that one. Yeah, I'm not going to do that also. Uh, so, <laughs> um, that's my best stage because it's it's so atmospheric. So uh-huh. when they brought it back for 14, I thought, yeah, we're going to have a little radio and a crowd cheering. But no, unfortunately, uh-huh. they didn't add that, which was a shame. <laughs> Uh, what about the the the, the recent re release of that game, two thousand two UM? Did you did you get a chance to play it a little bit? No, 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 no. no. I, I unfortunately missed that because uh, that was fairly recent, wasn't it? Yeah, just you know, like yeah. two months ago, maybe. Yeah, no, we had a lot of stuff going on in my in real in, in real life, yeah. uh, in my actual job, so I wasn't able to focus on a lot of stuff um, because obviously I do have a life outside of <laughs> video games. Um, so yeah, sometimes, unfortunately, I do miss stuff. Not that I want to, but it, it happens. Yeah, you know? I mean, especially once you have a family and you have a full-time yeah. job and trying to yeah. juggle all that, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not easy. Definitely not easy. And yeah. That's why we end up missing a lot of great games, you, you know, um, not just fighting games, but recent, you know, like AAA games and big releases. Yeah. Do you know, one thing I've noticed, um, and I don't know if you have uh, seen this as well, and what our, our conversations kind of made me think about the age divide that we have. You know, you've got us in one particular generation, and I see a lot of players who are 
I don't know, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, who pick up the game, their very first game, and they're absolutely with it. They're, they're brilliant at it. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, this isn't fair. <laughs> because if I had the time to play the game, <laughs> I would be better than you. <laughs> I don't know if that's something you've come across. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, because you don't have time to, to, you don't have time to practice. You don't have time to, and you kind of rely, you know, like before you would take a game, just go and just try to discover things by yourself. I mean, yeah, we didn't have yeah. internet. We didn't have, you know, you got an arcade, didn't even have special moves. You can't pause and see the command list. You just figure things out as you go. And that was fun. You didn't fun. have frame you, data. We didn't even know what that means. No. I didn't until, until you know, the, the day of the internet. But now yeah. everything is there. And I kind of use that to my advantage now. It's like when I want to try, I don't know, I want to I go into a, a new character and I don't have time. I go and see what pro players and good players are doing with that character. And, and then I try to take it from there. So I'm trying like cheat my way into it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a different, diff- different time. And again, as you said, we're really busy with, with life itself. So, uh, I think we're lucky that we can still find some time to do what we love, which is, you know, you know, for me doing that YouTube channel for you doing the tournaments and still playing these games, although not as much as we want. I think I'll rephrase that. I think we're both lucky to have wives that allow us to do what we want occasionally. I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of a lot of my friends. You know, like these. You know, they just drop out of out of the game in life because of yeah. you know, family and wife. <laughs> so yeah, I agree. I agree with you on that. Um, now let's talk a little bit about oh I, one one thing uh, with with the tournaments. I mean, uh, you guys have been doing so right now. I've seen that you're doing Samurai Showdown, Tekken Seven, mm-hmm. and Soul Calibur. Mm-hmm. So Those you, are our three main games. All right. Okay. And this, this is what usually you would be doing offline. Right. But I guess the, you know, with the pandemic things have, have, have changed. How, how do you guys, you know, manage with, with these, you know, lockdowns in the pandemic that affected every one of us? Um, well, for us, it really wasn't that big a deal, big of a deal because we always did the online to accompany the offlines. Anyway, mm-hmm. we do the offlines to look after the people in London and, and the UK because we'd have monthly offlines um, as well as quarterly regionals. Uh, which would obviously attract a larger crowd. And we had our annual, which was, which had its first, <clears throat> uh, it wasn't the first. It, yeah, it was, it was a lot. It broke, it broke the hundred people barrier. I think we got 130 in total in, in 2019 for Revolver. That's our annual. And we were set to double that this year, uh, bringing majors back to the capital because at the moment we have versus fighting, which is in the Midlands. Um, so that would have been nice, but you know, hey, COVID hit. But making the transition wasn't that difficult for us because we already had the infrastructure there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were already yeah. doing online tournaments. We were already doing offline tournaments, the online tournaments for those specifically in Europe. Um, so yeah, it, was, it wasn't hard for us. Oh, that, well, that's good. So it's, you know, it's real life changing situation that we're going through. So yeah. Hopefully things will we'll get back to normal fairly soon. Uh, now let's switch topics to a little upcoming game. You might have heard of it. Ingle Fighters 15. Well, so that game was announced. Game. <laughs> what was this? What, what game is that? Sorry. The King of Fighters 15. Uh, I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't blame you if you didn't hear that. Because, because a lot of people even forgot it existed, right? I mean, <laughs> they announced the game about a year and a half ago, right? And then yeah. it was just radio silence until three, four weeks ago. So yeah, yeah. what did you think of that teaser trailer? If you, if you want to call it that. <laughs> was it a teaser trailer? It was more of a, an announcement of the fact that we're going to make an announcement. Correct. As, as, as you said, <laughs> uh, the trailer for a trailer. Exactly. <laughs> um, but no, it was good to see at least something. Um, it looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did it, it did it did it get you excited for for the reveal? It or? did. No, it did. It did. I mean, I, I'd like to hold my judgment until I see something that I can judge. You know, I'd rather not. I'd rather not speculate it's because you speculate and you find yourself being disappointed. True. Um, I think that's something that you probably learn uh, as as you get a bit older. But uh-huh. you, know, you get all hype and you know, oh, wow, this is going to be good. And you build yeah. it up in your head. You're, you, you, you're doing all these imaginary combos and yeah, uh-huh. I can do this. And this character's going to be in it. When you get the actual product, it's never going to be what you quite imagine. So That's true. I'll just wait. <laughs> and well, luckily we don't have to wait for long. I mean, next week, next Thursday is the reveal trailer. Now, yeah. what, what are your hopes for, for the game? You know, what, what would you want to see from the King of Fighters 15? I want them to bring taunts back. All right. And... 
I really would like to see them bring the introductory cutscenes back. Uh, no, sorry, the introductory animations. Uh, Are you talking so, about you know, the characters or the stages? The characters. The characters, because in the early... That was, that was big, KOFs, yeah. That was big. Yeah, in, in the early KOFs, that's what gave you an insight into the character's personality. That's what told you the story without having to read the story. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't remember which one this was. It may have been 96. Um or 98, I can't remember which one it was, but you had a, a small cutscene between King and Joe. They're both Obviously, both of them have similar fighting styles. Um, sorry. Both of them have similar fighting styles, and Joe turns up and puts the belt on, laughs, and then, you know, chucks the belt off, and King's got, got her head in her hands, and I'm like, that tells you everything that you need to know right there, you know, about yeah, the there were like a couple of seconds, but, but, like, they really meant something for these characters. For, and they, they tried to do that in a different way in 13. You know, you, I'm, you saw that with the, the, the dialogue, you know, just... Yeah, you know, I didn't like it. I it, didn't like it. It was, it was more, more story content and lore, but it didn't have the same effect. The other one was, like, two seconds, it was enough. It gives, yeah, you, yeah, it gives you a window exactly. into these guys' personalities, the characters' personalities, and it didn't take, you know, it wasn't boring, right? So I'll liken it to this. Um, I'm old enough to remember when RPGs didn't have voice actors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was all text. Uh, we'll go not too far back, but we'll say Final Fantasy VII, for example, the original, the OG Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. um, it had all text and you could read, you had to read everything. And because you had to read it, you were forced to use your brain to impose what you thought a character sounded like. <laughs> yeah, your brain gave that character the voice uh, based on their mannerisms and their actions. Your 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 brain automatically filled in that gap, mm -hmm. but it was taken away from you when they brought in voice actors. Uh, when Final Fantasy X came out, they brought in voice actors. And you're like, well, hang on, I don't imagine this character sounding like this at all. You know, and that's kind of what I think happened with fourteen when they brought in these cutscenes with this this text that you had to read. It took away some magic, and yeah replace it with something that didn't really need to be there. That, that's my thought. So, so you said this, this uh, character introductions, I agree with you. That's something that I really would like to see. We haven't seen them in a while. Uh, what else in terms of, uh, of gameplay? What, what do you, well, what about, the, there's one thing, graphics. I mean, you know, the whole, well, fiasco, <laughs> if you will, you know, the whole controversy, the okay. controversy that happened with 14 when it first okay. was, was revealed. So, so what do you think of 14, by the way, in terms of graphics? I think they're fine. I think they're fine. Like, again, unpopular opinion. <laughs> I, I think today's gamers are incredibly spoiled. Um, there's so much stuff that hinges on a game looking good to the point where no one cares about how it plays. Look at Street Fighter V, for example. The game looks great. Mm -hmm. To me, I think it plays like pants. I think it's terrible. I can't. <laughs> I can't, it's just, it's soulless. There's no love in that game. But that's my thought as a, you know, objective individual. Um, but to base a game's success solely on its graphics is incredibly shallow, I think. So yeah, I loved 14. And I remember playing games when there were just a dot on the screen and that's all you had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you on that one. I mean, I didn't, I didn't like the graphics when I saw them because I was, I guess I was expecting something to look better, you know. Uh, but I think it was, it was not, it was more the shaders that they were using for that first trailer. That things got a lot better with that first patch, the V1 patch, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I agree with you. A lot of people. I mean, I do think graphics do matter. Uh, not as much to me, but uh, they do kind of like help with the game's longevity. You know, a lot of people didn't give 14 a chance, even though it's a great game. I love it. One of my favorite King Fighters because yeah. of how it looks. So yeah, we might not, true. it might not be as important to us, but again, it, it helps the longevity games. It's going to bring more players, It'll help the community grow, which is what we need. I mean, fighting games is, you know, as I think it, it's a, it's almost a dying breed, you know, like luckily things are getting a little bit better. Uh, so we do need, all the players we can get, I think. You know, fighting games, I think, are dying. Well, they're not dying. They're just in hibernation. They're, they're, it's had a bit of an uptick recently. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of that does depend on publishers and uh, certainly sponsors and investors. Uh, I think they do need to work a bit closely, a bit more closer with uh, the people that are actually promoting their titles for them. True. Yeah. 
as opposed to, uh, I don't know, trying to do stuff for themselves without really knowing how what to expect from the communities, you know? Yeah. I don't know. That's something I'd like to see SNK do with, with 15, is actually work closer with uh, the people who are actually doing the events for them. That's true. I mean, uh, I, I feel that SNK has changed lately. I mean, compared it to what it is now to what it was before. I mean, there was no Absolutely. communication between SNK and the fans. I mean, it's definitely gotten, it's, it's on the right, it's not there yet, but I think that they're going that way. So hopefully they keep on that, on, on that path because that's going to benefit everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the thing with fighting games, <clears throat> the unique thing with fighting games, I think is that it only has as much life as people put into it. If people aren't playing the game anymore, then it's dead. If people don't see people playing the game anymore, then it's mm -hmm. dead. Do you know what I mean? We've managed to get uh, four years out of KOF 40, and it's only recently that I've managed to lay it to rest. But we've managed to get four years out of the, out of the game with a, a rapidly diminishing player base in the UK mm -hmm. uh, and even in Europe. Um, because... I don't know. I don't know. Name your reason. There's lots and lots of different reasons as to why KOF 14 hasn't lasted as long as, say, Street Fighter V. Um, but we've managed to get a lot of mileage out of it. And um, we're still getting that same mileage out of, uh, out of Samurai Showdown, which is good. How's, how's the player base for Samurai Showdown in the UK? Um, <laughs> what do you think? I mean, is it, is it, has it, has it uh, shrunk since you're in the beginning? Is it? It really has. It really yeah. has. I, and, I think there's a lot of reasons why um, games like SNK titles tend not to do so well in the UK. There's, there's a ton of them. I can name maybe a few, but even that wouldn't be exhaustive. So uh, I mentioned this before, uh, people have a tendency to pick the strongest characters that they can find. And in SNK, there's always a very, very strong character. In 14, you have NHS, um, I forgot their names now. Shune and, and uh, yeah, Shune, Najid, uh, Hayden, and uh, Shune, mm -hmm. NHS. Um, and <laughs> they were really, they were, they, were, they were invincible at one point. They were, they were the team that you didn't want to play. And I know in Morocco, you guys have a tendency to pick top tier characters. Mm -hmm. In yeah. the UK, that's enough to scare off half a player base because they don't know what to do. No one knows what to do. Yeah. They're impossible to play against. And it sucks all the fun out of playing the game. Um, when you have to go up against that. Um, so yeah, in the early days for Sam show, you had Janjuro. He was, you know, the ultimate gorilla. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Ungabunga, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know that he scared off a lot of people because people didn't know what to do against him. Mm. People didn't want to learn because everybody and their aunt chose Janjuro. <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of the, the thing. That yeah, I remember like it was, there was one tournament, it was like the top eight, seven of them was, was Genjiro, the rest was, I think the other one was like Haomar or something. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You even look at KO, uh, KO 14 and it, it was a similar thing. The, the top, yeah. uh, however many characters, uh, people were using the same characters. Mm -hmm. Same with 13, everybody had Takuma. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was ridiculous and that's... Uh -huh. That's the main thing I think, or well, one of the main things with SNK's titles, which uh, is is to their detriment. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, uh, I mean, at least with fourteen, we had we had we had quite a lot of patches. But the games before, you know, was was released like that. You, you know, tough luck. You you have yeah. to either play it that way or just abandon it. So, so I'm pretty sure now. I mean, with, with again with with online patches, things they make things a little bit better. You know, like Genjiro was was patched. It was not it's not a beast anymore. I mean, it's still a very good character but not as it used to be so hopefully that's not gonna be that's you know that's gonna continue from king of fighters 15 so we won't have any overpowered characters yeah but the problem is from yeah. the time of the first patch the initial release to the first and second patches that's when people are playing the game usually for right. the first time right. and you've got a lot of people who will pick up the game we've been around with snk for a very very long time who'll pick up the game and then automatically go back to their the main characters whether it be iori whether it be i don't know in in, in 15's case it'll be shanae for a lot of people mm -hmm. um and that's going to scare off the player base mm -hmm. it really will because yeah. they're going to be like we don't know what to do against this person there's me i'm choosing mr mid to low tier mm -hmm. and i don't know how to beat this high tier because mm -hmm. you know yeah. what do i do what buttons do i press when do i press them you're not giving people chances to, to learn. And that's, and then you're right about that. I mean, sometimes it's that, that time from, from the release to the patch, that's where you lose mm. a lot of the players. So hopefully, they, I, mean, that's, I mean, I'm pretty sure they know this. So I hope that the game is going to be tested as much as possible. And, and one way of testing, I think is it'd be great if they can do like some um, online. Well, but again, it's difficult. I mean, yeah. like a beta, but that's not gonna, they're not gonna give you all the characters. So that's still not gonna, 
fix the problem. Uh, yeah. But at least we might we might get good netcode because a lot of people will just drop the game again if the netcode doesn't work on on day one. Right? People yeah. don't give, especially. I think uh, I don't. I don't want to say like you know the old uncle, but I think like the younger generation does not have the patience that you know, we used to have you know with, with these games you know it doesn't work all right move on you know this is this is true yeah, yeah. The, the kids of today have no patience whatsoever yeah. if it's shiny it's brilliant yeah. <laughs> and that's and that's you know that's gonna hurt hurt the game hopefully we're not we're not gonna be in that um situation now so graphics you said graphics are fine taunts yeah. um so any any other gameplay like what about gameplay mechanics like what did you think of the gameplay mechanics of of 14 because i know one one thing that uh and i was vocal about it myself is uh the ex moves that were exclusive to max mode what do you think about that what about i mean because in 13 if you remember you could do ex moves outside of that's max right mode. that's right do you have any preference to no i'm fine with it i quite like the idea of having that visual marker of maxing up um and giving you uh, that and the physical acts of maxing up giving you access to moves it's a visual marker to your opponent I think mm-hmm. it's fine. No, oh, okay. A lot of people are, are are more into like going back to thirteen, myself included. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, uh, I understand. Uh, any? What about what about characters? Like uh, obviously, King. Uh, you said King is one of your favorite characters. What what uh, are the characters you want to see in in fifteen? Honestly, if Ikari are there, I'm happy. I mean, we know that we know they're that. there. I mean, they have yeah. to be there, right? I mean, they've been there in every single KOF. <laughs> then I don't need to worry about anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> as long as long as Ikari are there, then I'm I'm very much happy. However, I would also like to see uh, the sports team make a return. Oh, really? All right. Yeah, simply because I mean they weren't really that great to be honest with you, but it would be <laughs> nice to see them back uh, because I'd love to see how they'd rework them with a uh, with with modern mechanics. And, you know, it'd be nice story-wise for the law, for them actually to either find their tickets and not get their tickets stolen. Their tickets yeah, like, stolen. oh man, like they, they, they never had, they never, they never had a good, you know, they always were unlucky with whether it's story-wise or with, you know, the gameplay itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'd, I'd really like to see them back. Um, <gasps> other than that, I don't really have um, many others that I'd really like to see. What about game? Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, knowing SNK now, they'd probably bring Terry back as a, as a smash crossover character. <laughs> uh, that would be interesting. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, And speaking of those crossover, crossover characters, man, like uh, I, for one, I never like, like guest characters in my games. I hated that. I don't know why I don't, I, I just don't understand it. I don't, I still don't, but <sighs> you know, they do, help with the, these other franchises you know a lot of people are like who's this guy in smash you know and, and that got a lot of people i saw a lot of comments in, in the channel saying that you know i i knew about snk thanks to you know nintendo and smash brothers so so i think that's um you know that's a good thing for 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 the games um and i expect that we're going to get some sort of guest characters as well for 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 king of fighters i mean samurai we got we get two warden and uh, that lady i forgot her name um so I guess, what, yeah, I, I forgot yeah. her name. Yeah, uh, she's not important. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes her. She's not important. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so what, what, are, what, what is your take on, on guest characters? I support them. I'll tell really? you why. Yeah, obviously we've mentioned before, you and I are of a similar age. Uh, so you'll remember Capcom versus SNK series. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, that game uh, brought together a lot of different characters. You had uh, Hibiki from Last Blade guessing in that game you mm-hmm. had a uh, home maru from summer showdown in that game you obviously had terry and uh, a whole host of other snk characters and that um br- bridged the gap for a lot of players to introduce them to snk because they were playing against these characters you couldn't avoid playing against them because mm-hmm. you had these two camps in the arcades you had you know one the left side of the arcade playing um street fighter you had the right side of the arcade playing snk and this game brought everybody together yeah that was brilliant Absolutely brilliant. Um, fast forward a couple of years and you've got, <clears throat> uh, obviously, the Smash crossovers. You've got Geese in Tekken. Yeah. Um, and he is the only reason I play Tekken. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like the game Tekken as much as I should, um, considering that it's our main title. Um, 
However, I will play the game because Geese is in it and I enjoy playing Geese. I can play him just like I do in, well, I don't play him in 14, but if I were to play him in 14, <laughs> I would play Geese in that way. Maximum Combo's work, they've imported every single one of his moves and he is an SNK character through and through. So he has uh, the integral. projectiles and everything in the, in the game? Projectiles, all of, all of his, yep, all of his ca- counters are there, his projectiles are there, his Raging Storm is there. Even He's even got the proper pretzel motion, which is great. Um I love him in Tekken. He's an absolutely brilliant character. He makes Tekken great for me. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah so, um, and I'm guessing we're going to get something in, in King of Fighters 15. Don't know exactly what. Now, what about fighting? Uh, I mean, um, gameplay modes. Is it like any particular besides the main fighting, you know, the, of the game? Like any other modes that you're interested in? Um, I don't usually bother with story modes because I hate playing against the computer. Um, so as long as there's a practice mode, and an online mode with a decent lobby system. I love the KO 14 lobby system. Didn't so much like the Samurai Showdown lobby system. Um, as long as it's got those modes, I'm, I'm fairly happy. You don't really need anything else. Time is very... maybe if you try to have trophy hunting, but other than that, not really. That was very strange for Samurai Showdown. Like they went from an excellent lobby system in 14 and they went to a subpar, you know, especially in the beginning, it was horrible. You know, you had to actually fight for your for your for your spot. And I think that was a bug mm. or something. I remember. So they fixed that at least. But um it was kind of strange that they left that, you know, pretty much perfect lobby system for the yeah. new one. Yeah. No. Oh, can I just go back? Go ahead. Um, so I said that I don't usually play with story mode. I don't, unless I'm unlocking story. Now okay. 14 doesn't have that great a story apart from no matter who you get to at the end then yep. um you know verse dies and you know it kind of resets the universe for 15 which is great mm-hmm. um but there's not really that much uh reason to play through the story with multiple characters it's not like the orochi saga or the Ness mm-hmm. saga where you know each character has as much uh investment mm-hmm. in 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 their uh, peers um that doesn't really exist in in 14 which i would like it to have exist in 15. Sure, I, I hope so as well. I mean, uh, one of the big things about SNK games is is the story and lore, and with the car- current technology, I mean, you can do some great wonders exploring that that part. Of- I'll give them voices. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna. That's not. That's definitely gonna happen. They're gonna have voices. Yeah. But uh, but w- w- have you? Do you play Mortal Kombat? <laughs> no. No. All right. I mean, you see like the, this, the story modes of that, of those games. I don't think we'll, we'll get that in, in King of Fighters for sure. We don't but I mean, it. this is like a huge, it's like a completely different game, you know, like a cinematic story, you know, taking, I don't know, 10, 12 hours. Like, you know, it's, it's a own game by itself. See, the story modes in, in Mortal Kombat are very different to that of, of, of KOF, uh, the KOF series. Uh, the communities are very different. Mm-hmm. You'll find that the communities for Mortal Kombat are mainly at home. Mm-hmm. They're online players. They're not really tournament. Let's go out and, like, and meet at a tournament. That, that's not really them. Yeah. Um, also, they also a lot of people, a lot, a lot of there are a lot of mean people in that community. By the way, <laughs> to let you know, someone who yeah. plays the game online. Yeah, let's um, oh let's God. not go there. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's not go there. So, um, but yeah, so they like the whole single player experience uh, with KOF. It's not so much that you know you with with KOF fans, you tend to like. Uh, the community, if you have one near you, if you're fortunate enough to have one near you, um, you, you tend to like uh, meeting the people. You tend to like sitting in the lobby with another person and actually playing that same person over and over and over and over again. And so you actually figure it out or you've lost 30 times in a row, whichever happens mm-hmm. first. Um, yeah, it's completely different communities. True. You know? True. Um, uh, so... I think we, we we covered pretty much everything that you know there is of what we know so far from the King of Fighters uh, 15. Now, any any particular uh, hopes in terms of uh, crossplay? Do you think that's something that could happen? You see, it you could see absolutely it? happen. It could absolutely happen. Uh, there's no reason why SNK can't have a PS4 uh, slash PS5 slash PC crossplay. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know about Xbox. From from my understanding is that now it became quite easy with the Unreal Engine. Yeah. That you know, like uh, Epic actually provide the developers with help and some you know specific um, easy to implement code to allow uh, crossplay across pretty much everything. You know, like Xbox and and PC, and if it comes to Switch, I don't know. 
So it's just a matter of will it be implemented? And I think it will definitely help because the SNK and the community in general is, is a lot smaller compared to Street Fighter and taking that small community and splitting it over platforms, that's, you know, it's a mistake. definitely, yeah. Is a mistake. Now, in theory, that could work wonders for tournament organizers like like myself and my team, um, because having all of the different player bases in one in one place is perfect. I don't have to do a PS4 tournament. I don't have to do a separate Steam tournament. I don't have to do an Xbox tournament. I can just do one tournament, and everybody's there. It's brilliant. Yep. Um, you can do so for Street Fighter. Why can't we do so for SNK? Sure. There's no reason. So. Well, Street Fighter is a bit different because my understanding is that Street Fighter they run in their own Capcom is running their own servers, and it's a uh, it's it's really costly for them from what I'm hearing. But mm. the technology now is a lot easier to implement than it was when Street Fighter Five came out. And speaking of Street Fighter Five, I'm just a lot of people and and uh, you you also said this before hate the game, but I don't I don't understand why. Like, what, what are your reasons for hating? Because I'm a big Street Fighter. I love Street Fighter since since the Street Fighter Two. And I played five to you know uh, quite quite a bit. Uh, I don't play it anymore because I don't have time for to play it. But uh, I I don't I don't see why why the hate. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I've got a number of reasons as to why I don't like Street Fighter Five as much as I once did. We'll say that in 2016 when it was released, um, it was pretty much the only game apart from Street Fighter Four that mm-hmm. you could play. And I absolutely love Street Fighter 4. I'm a Hugo main and a Rose main. And I love the game. Absolutely brilliant. But then Street Fighter 5 came along with a vastly reduced roster. Yep. And the only character that I felt any kind of affinity with uh, being a Hugo main was Zangief, mm-hmm. which was fine. You know, season one Zangief was horrible, but you were still able to scrub the occasional win. Um, but that game is very matchup based. It's not very knowledge based. Well, it is now because it relies so heavily on frame data and everybody now has this frame data. Mm-hmm. But certainly in the early days for me, I felt that <clears throat> it relies so much on matchup knowledge. Um, or in some cases, the knowledge didn't matter at all. For example, if you're Geef and you're playing against Dalsim, that's a night one matchup. And there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. It's yeah. just the way the game works. Mm-hmm. And that's what I didn't like because. Okay. In KOF, even if I'm, say, Clark or Ralph, whichever, insert your horror ta- name here, going up against somebody who's using Hyden, uh, not Hyden, because that's difficult, <laughs> um, Shanae. Um, Shanae has a lot of uh, tools, a lot of ways of doing things. He is a top tier character. However, if you know that matchup, you can do so, you can still beat him. Mm-hmm. Same with Hyden. If yeah. I'm Clark in particular, or even Ralph, I know the matchup well enough. I know that the, my openings to beat them. But Dalsim, sometimes you don't really have that opportunity at all. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's literally the flip of a coin. And I felt that way. Uh, it felt the game beginning to become that way increasingly as, as, as the game uh, progressed. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what turned me off. Also, I, I didn't mm-hmm. like that uh, you're pressing buttons and... I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's, it's a difficult thing to, to quantify here because you're pressing buttons and things are happening on screen. If you won, you thought, well, that's what's supposed to happen. If you lost, you thought, well, that's what's supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. You didn't mm-hmm. feel anything either way. There's no feeling in that game uh, for me. Okay. I didn't get any satisfaction from, from playing that game. All right, I see. Well, I mean, uh, they, they're trying to, I mean... I'm hearing that uh, they're doing their best for Street Fighter 6 to be different. So we'll see how that... Uh, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I think the problem that you had with... Another problem that you had with Street Fighter is that it became more about memory, um, but not necessarily muscle memory. This is for me, by the way. I'm not saying for anybody else, but uh, it became more about memory. I have to memorize this string. Oh, okay, I see that. Now I have to press this button. You know, and then do whatever thing. Oh, now I have to press this button. And it's like... Uh, there's no variety. There's not enough of mm, anything okay. for me to yeah. do anything with. Do you know what I mean? At least with KOF, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got options. I've got choices. I've got other mechanics that actually work and do stuff. With Street Fighter Five, I didn't feel that I had that. I and mean, I know they brought new characters in which had those um, mechanics, but for me, it's too late. Mm, yeah. I mean, it's been what uh, four four years now, almost five years, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, well, let's see what happens. But uh, for King of Fighters 15, I guess we don't have to wait that long to see how the game looks and get some idea of, of you know, the how the mechanics. Uh, well, last question for you, like, what are your hopes for the trailer that we're getting next week? <laughs> what do you want to see in that first trailer? I, I don't have it. I just want to see Ikari. If I see Clark and I see Ralph, I'll be, I'll be happy. Um, I've said that enough in this, this interview, haven't I? <laughs> but if I see those two, I'll be very, very happy. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not expecting anything. I just really hope that SNK have considered how they're going to present this game. They've had I long enough. And I just hope that it, it goes well for them. I really do. I agree with you. And I, hope, I hope so as well. Um, well, Lord Grimless, thank you so much for this opportunity. As I said, Definitely. next week, we'll, we'll know how the King of Fighters 15 is going to look. We'll, we'll have an idea of the gameplay. Not, we, won't, we won't know much, probably. It's going to be a first trailer. Uh, but uh, again, thank you so much for, for talking to me about this. Thank you so much for, for this opportunity. And hopefully we can do this again once we know more about the King of Fighters 15 or after the King of Fighters 15 release. And I'm looking forward to what you guys are going to do with the King of Fighters 15 when it comes out in terms of online tournaments and you know, hopefully by that time we'll be, we'll have returned to a normal life and have some offline tournaments. I really would love to, to be in one of your tournaments, just to, you know, offline tournaments and visit and see all the, all the hype that you guys uh, experience in, in, in there. So I'll definitely try to do that when, uh, when things settle down and, and life is back to normal. But if we ever get that esports money, I'll be sure to fly you over. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Lord Grimmels. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for having me. Thank you.